What, if any, are the places where we find hope? How do we understand that hope? How and where is it generated? What is the deepest nature of hope? Now, the phrase generative capacities appears in this talk's title because it seems to me that the capacity for hope is something which can grow and flourish in individuals and in societies. So what do I mean by hope? It's certainly not the same as optimism. A disposition to whistle a merry tune, to look on the bright side, however irrational, whatever the state of things. Optimism may or may not be realistic. Hope is something else. The great philosopher and theologian Thomas Aquinas treats hope in two distinct but intimately related parts. He first presents hope as a natural passion arising from a desire for something understood to be good, though not yet possessed. Difficult, but not impossible to attain. So hope is a movement of the will, a striving towards such a future good, an appetite that stirs up confidence and grants assurance. So he says, hope abounds in young people, and in drunkards. <laughs> More seriously, hope moves us to become pilgrims. A hope-filled person is spurred into action when faced with something desirable yet hard to achieve. Hope is not the product of opinion or argument alone. There's a lovely phrase about the philosopher who knew all the arguments and for whom they had all grown cold. We do not acquire hope by having a point of view. There is something else, an impetus to act, a vision, something from within our understanding that fires our imagination, a drive consciously expressed to achieve a possible yet still future good. So hope is a partnership between both our understanding and our will. It moves us to get something done, something demanding, something that will make a difference. Hope gets you out of bed in the morning. The lack of hope leaves you reaching for the duvet. Our world is full of signs of hope. They surround us every day. They come in the daily strivings of people to establish, maintain, express, or consolidate efforts to attain something both desired and difficult to achieve. So no matter how fragmented our world might be, no matter how lacking in overall vision at present, there are countless fragments of hope. They are precisely the experiences of daily life to which we find ourselves responding with warmth of heart, with a quiet smile of gratitude or admiration. They are a neighbor's kindness, a friend's compassion, the utter generosity of a lover, the creativeness of a gifted person brought to a good purpose, be it the generation of wealth or the work of charity. These stories do not fill our newspapers, but they do fill our hearts and encourage us. But I would like to end with a short reflection I wrote after visiting the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem. Yad Vashem, is a powerful tribute to all who perished in the Holocaust and a damning indictment of all who perpetrated it directly or indirectly. And my visit only slowly did these perceptions sink deeply into my consciousness. I was drawn too into the personal horrors of the victims of the Holocaust, told and retold, city by city, family by family, until reduced to yet another corpse, brutally bulldozed into a pit. Never before had I felt in my deepest being the impact of the total degradation of the human person, executed on an industrial scale, and here presented before my eyes. How do so many of us now live with the guilt of being associated with its perpetrators or with its indirect participants, or just its bystanders. Sin is a reality, and no one remains untouched by it. 
But does not this holocaust of sin and evil demand that we stop any talk of human goodness and simply stay silent in front of its abyss in which surely all hope is lost? Yet, even here are traces of enduring goodness to be found. The last words of many spoken in the gas chambers were, next year, Jerusalem. Traces of heroic goodness are found in the lives of those who risked all to shelter Jewish people, who formed with them the powerful bond, that alliance of secrecy between the hunted and the protector. And today, the same heroism is recognized in the granting of the title Righteous Gentile to those whose stories of astonishing courage emerge only now. There are indeed moments in which the small prints of the messages of hope seemingly disappear from sight. There are many when it does not. Ours is surely the task of keeping alive these rumors of hope however we understand them, and of knitting them together so that the far horizons of an eternal hope may never be lost to our sight.